Good evening, and welcome to this worship service of MCC Sacred Journey. Whoever you are, and whether you're online or here in the room with us, um, we welcome you. If you're uh, with us on Facebook, I hope you give us a like or love or some other comment to let us know that you're here. We begin knowing that God is with us. And if God is with each one of us, we cannot be very far from each other, even when we're separated. So let us affirm that unity by sharing a sign of peace. May God's peace be with you. And please share a sign of peace with whomever you might be with. Our opening praise song tonight is Love Lifted Me. We'll sing three verses of it. I invite you to rise as you're able in body, mind, and or spirit and join in singing however you can. Sink. 
sinking deep in doubt, far from the peaceful shore, fighting fears within, without, sinking to rise no more. But the ruler of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to thee I give. Ever to thee I'll cling. In thy blessed presence live. Ever thy praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful love in service to, to thee belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. in danger look above Jesus completely saves and will lift you by great love out of the angry waves Christ the ruler of the sea billows thy will obey Christ our Savior wants to be be saved today love, love lifted me when could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Amen. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. If you have a candle or other source of illumination, I invite you to light it now as we mark an entrance into sacred time and sacred space. Jesus began his ministry around Galilee, traveling and teaching in the synagogues and healing those who were sick. I invite you to join, um, actually, um, I invite you to join in the responsive prayer that's on the screen. Holy one, we long for healing in our hurt and tired places. May your power of grace and love make us whole. Renew and restore us, O God. We thank you for the healers in our midst, in our community, in our world. Sustain them and give each of us the grace to be bearers of healing to others. Make us instruments of your healing. Amen. I invite Ginny to come forward and read the scriptures now. No? Um, you're right. Oh, I can't read today, so here it is. Thank you, Sherilyn. Where is the scripture? Okay. 
One moment, please. Five o'clock. One day, in one of the villages, there was a man covered with lep leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him in prayer and said, if you want to, you can cleanse me. Jesus put out his hand, touched him and said, I want to be clean. Then and there, his skin was smooth, the leprosy gone. Jesus instructed him, don't talk about this all over town. Just quietly go present your healed skin to the priest, along with the offering ordered by Moses. Your cleansed and obedient life, not your words, will bear witness to what I have done. But the man couldn't keep it to himself, and the word got out. Soon, a large crowd of people had gathered to listen and be healed of all their ailments. As often as possible, Jesus withdrew to out of the way places for prayer. Amen, thank you. The Jesus healing stories, I love the, the places where he says, you're healed. Now, don't tell anyone. And that's like, you know, it's like one of us putting up a sign that says wet paint. Do not touch. You know, somebody's going to do it. You know, somebody's going to do it. I was thinking of another miracle story, given that this is um, Super Bowl Sunday. Um, it's it's still told in Boston that last year after Tom Brady won his seventh career Super Bowl, he flew to Key West and walked over to Havana for a little break on the beach. <laughs> Across the water. Um, and if you're not Tom Brady fans, um, you knew I was, so I'm not gonna apologize. Well, we have a different kind of miracle tonight. If you can't believe that story about Tom Brady, and I hope you don't, um, there's one that we can believe. So let's consider that. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ways in which you bring us healing from our ills of body and spirit. And I pray that right now your spirit would be with us and move amongst us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. And together might we discover your word and your wisdom for us tonight. Amen. So this story is one of those where I, I feel like it needs a disclaimer, don't try this at home. You know, professional, do not attempt. Jesus touches, heals a leper by touching him. Leprosy, Hansen's disease is contagious, you know? So Jesus knew he could do this without harm, apparently. Um, but that touch is important, right? Touch can be very helpful in healing. Some folks are skilled at massage, others at Reiki, still others at chiropractic, very specific ways of touching people and applying pressure in different places in the, in the body. And they know that touch, or sometimes even just proximity to someone else's skin with good vibes can affirm, can affirm another and improve their health and their well-being. And, and I know y'all know I'm talking about safe touch, right? This is the touch that honors people's boundaries because too many of us have experienced physical contact that was not welcome and that was harmful instead of healing. And that is not part of God's plan. And that is not what I'm talking about tonight, amen. Healing touch is safe and consensual, full of loving vibes 
and good intentions. Touch is one of the things we've missed most in the era of COVID. Can I get an amen? Amen. I thought I would. I thought I would. And there are good reasons for keeping our distance. I'm the only one who's not wearing a mask in this room tonight, and that's because I'm far away from the rest of you at the moment. Far enough away that I can speak safely and sing safely. There are good reasons for keeping our distance. But we miss it, don't we? You know, elbow bumps are fun, but they're not the same as hugs and handshakes. They don't involve our body selves in the same way. And we need to grieve that, amen? But the other thing we can do is to make sure that we communicate with those we love, those within our bubble, communicate with touch. In the safety of our bubbles, in ways that are affirming, in ways that express love. And since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, in case you thought I'd forgotten, <laughs> um, touch is also part of the healing power of love. I know for some of us, some of us might be with was Jay Giles who said, I've been through the reds, the blues, and the pinks. And all I can tell you is love stinks. I know I spent a lot of years in that place. So I'm, I'm speaking to those who have somebody they love, maybe if it's only your dog. The hug of a friend, the touch of a lover or a partner or a spouse, the various touches of lovemaking, I won't go into details. Even, even a wet kiss on the mouth from a dog or a cat. They're good for our health. Some of those of us who are not dog lovers are going, ick. yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for reminding us of that. But it does dog good, so why not share it? Touches of those that we love are good for our health and strengthen the love relationship. So here's my homework for us this week. This Valentine's Day and this week, if you can safely do it, Touch someone you love, even if it's, only, if it's only your dog or your cat or your bird. And if, how about fish? I don't know that there's a safe way you can touch a fish. You can't walk a fish. You can't play catch with a fish, which is why I don't have fish. <laughs> And if you're in a relationship, I have some reading to recommend to you. It's biblical. It's called the Song of Songs. And that might be fun reading to accompany some loving touches. Just going to say. And I'm going to wrap this up with one more thing. And this is uh, a part, in part a point of personal privilege, but it's not really off the topic. Um, I will share with you that one of my sisters passed away this week, very unexpectedly. Um, it had been a couple of days since anyone had spoken with her. And you probably know where I'm going with this. Our earthly life is short. Amen. Usually shorter, almost always shorter than we would like. And we cannot predict when it will end. So as you think about the ones you love, I invite you to consider this. Um, uh, all of y'all know that family relationships can be complicated, especially in our community. And sometimes we don't get reconciled while we have the chance. And that's something that, that I'm grieving. 
But when we can, I pray that we can get reconciled. And with the people that we love, don't wait for the right moment to tell them you love them, to bring them that hug, that healing touch, to call them up and say, hey, are you okay? Give them a call to stay in contact. And reach out and touch someone you love and do it early and often. Because we never know when the opportunity to share love and show love and bring healing will be gone forever. So enjoy it and share it now. And have a blessed Valentine's week. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we give you thanks for all the people that we love and that have loved us. And we pray your blessings on them. Help us this week to be mindful of how our touch affects others and to be mindful to make it a good effect on each other. We ask this in Jesus' name and all your many names. Amen. A response to the message is an old Gaither song. I invite you again to, if you feel like it, rise as you're able in body, mind, and or spirit. But join in the song, He Touched Me. This is a time in our service when we give thanks to God for all that God has given to us, and we have an opportunity to share in God's generosity. If you're with us in the, in the church, um, the basket is on the back table. If you haven't yet uh, put an offering in then there and you would like to, now is the time to do that. If you're with us online, uh, instructions and an opportunity to give electronically are this link. I want to ask um, Jenny to come forward one more time and talk about Super Sunday, since it is Super Sunday. I'd like to thank everyone that's 
you know, participated and brought things in. There's a table full of things. The box is overflowing. And um, if you still want to participate, you can stick a dollar or two in the little green bucket beside the sign. Um, but anyway, this helps a lot of people in our community who don't have a lot to be able to have good, nutritious food. Thank you. Amen. We pray with me. Holy one, we know that your grace and your unconditional love are gifts freely given to us. We know there's no obligation to give you anything in return. However, those who are well-bred know what to do. We know that you will cheerfully accept any gift that comes from our heart. Holy one, guide our church to use all these gifts that we bring to make a way for God's world to spread throughout, God for God's love to spread throughout our world. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. And this evening, let's begin with gratitude. Holy One, we thank you for all of your gifts to us, for family and friends and lovers, and the ability to gather here in your presence. We thank you again for the Olympic Games and their ideal of mutual respect among the people of all nations. And we give you thanks for the ability to enjoy the amazing skills that so many athletes have. And if there's anything else you want to give praises for, which you'd like to voice now. I want to give thanks for the two places I've seen daffodils blooming already this week. Thank you, God, for spring. Holy One, we lift to you those praises that we voice now and, and those that remain in the silence of our hearts. God, we remember and pray for our world, that all may know your peace and that all may be safe. We pray for the people of Ukraine and surrounding nations, God, that they might be spared the horrors of war, that 
the people in charge of those armies might not use them to destroy others. We pray especially for our community in Ukraine. They may stay safe. I thank you for the life of Katie Sanyuk and pray for her eternal rest and for the welfare of everyone who loved her. And for the intentions that we voice now. God, we lift to you not only the intentions we voice, but also those that remain in the silence of our hearts. We praise you and bless you always and pray as Jesus taught us, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the dominion and the power and the glory are yours, God, now and forever. Amen. Well, stop me if you've heard this one before here at MCC Sacred Journey as an all metropolitan community church as we celebrate an open communion. Whoever you are and whatever you believe, if you seek communion with God, you're welcome. And every week we remember and celebrate that the night before he died, Jesus was at dinner with his friends. He took bread from the table. He blessed it, gave thanks for it, and broke it, and gave it to them saying, take and eat my life given for you. And after dinner, he took a cup of wine from the table and gave you thanks and praise and blessed it and shared it with his friends saying, take and drink all of you. This is my love poured out for you. Poured out to show you how good will triumph over evil so that all might be reconciled with God. Whenever you eat and drink, he said, do this in remembrance of me. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your gift to us in Jesus. May our sharing of these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine or whatever food and drink we have handy be for us in whatever way we understand it, a meal at your welcome table. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wisdom has baked her bread and poured her wine, and the feast is set. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Um, and I'm going to thank Ginny for being our usher tonight. Thank you. I'm going to wait till everybody has an individual cup, and then I invite us all to consume together. And if there's anybody who needs help opening this little thing, please, please ask Ginny for help. It looks like we're all good. The bread of heaven. Amen. and the cup of salvation. Amen.
So for our closing song, I invite us to sing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. As I think I said last week, this month, along with other MCC churches, we're invited to lean into the blessing of Black History Month. And that was um, recognized by President Ford in 1976, who called on Americans to seize the opportunity to honor the two often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. And in the church, we often ignore national holidays and months of recognition, but the Christian church has played a central role in Black history, and not all of them good. The church has behaved in awful and oppressive ways throughout our history as well as in freeing and liberating ways. So this week, we'll again lean into that complicated history as a sign of hope, singing a familiar song and doing so with an, with an awareness of what this song meant to its authors, Black people who'd been enslaved. Many of you recognize Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, often sung at baptisms and funerals, the lyrics may reference the longing of the enslaved to return to Africa. According to Eileen Gunther in her book, In Their Own Words, a chariot was a French sled-like vehicle used to transport tobacco in the Carolinas. After the rebellion that Nat Turner led, the enslaved sung a yearning for chariots to swing out of the skies from Africa and pass low enough for their souls to mount and be carried many miles from North America. The band of angels is thought to be a reference to Harriet Tubman and those who accompanied her on her trips in the Underground Railroad. After Turner and after the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, the enslaved felt that their only place of safety was in heaven or maybe in the North or in Africa. So let us hold them and their descendants in our hearts as we join queer artist Justin Ryan in singing. Well, I looked over Jordan and oh, what did I see? Coming for carry me Coming for to carry me home, but still my soul feels heavenly bound. Coming for to carry me home, sweet low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home.
Amen. For our blessing tonight, I invite us again to maybe rise as we're able. And if you're comfortable, look at somebody else and let's sing it to each other. We'll sing it through twice. this evening. Um, there are meetings next week. Um, Bible study will not meet this week. Um, we have a board of directors meeting next week on Tuesday. Before I leave this page, um, the Reverend Barbara Rathlin will be on call in case you need a pastor during this coming week. That number is 828-489-9300. So next week, um, we also have, I'm looking for it and I can't find it. We also have, um, the week after next, we also have a congregational visioning meeting and that's on the 23rd of February. So, uh, you should have received notice about that in, um, in our weekly newsletter. It'll be in this same zoom room and, um, if you're watching us online, it's on the first page. I think just past it. Uh, yeah, Board of Directors is Tuesday. Uh, not this coming week, but the week after that. The week after that. And then the following day is a congregational visioning meeting. And if you're with us online, you're also invited. Uh, it's a Zoom meeting. So you don't have to worry about driving to Hendersonville. Um, God bless you and have a great week. <laughs>